Hey everyone, J Dr. Jake Audi here, looking pretty scary under these lights. Um, so I've got my color drawing box out today because I'm going to be going through a method, the color metric essays. Um, now, color metric essays are a huge spectrum of lab techniques, um, but they all involve the production of a colored substance, right? Um, and it's quite interesting. It really covers a fundamental principle of science. Most of science is working with things that are invisible. The visible things got figured out pretty quickly, and so science suddenly became uh, the investigation of a lot of invisible things. DNA, RNA, proteins, all of these things are invisible, right? But we still need to measure them, we need to quantify them, so we need to make the invisible visible. That's a huge part of science, is making the invisible visible. From Leeuwenhoek's microscopes to... Um, uh, Rosalind Franklin's x-ray crystallography, it was all about making the invisible visible. Now, color metric essays are one of the best examples of this, simplest examples of this, and they are used every day in the labs. All the time these are used in the labs, and they're about the production of color. Now, I'm going to go through two examples of color metric essays just to give you an idea about how some of them work. Now, there's loads of them, as I mentioned, but it, it'll give you the fundamental principles about how some, some of them work. Now for this, I'm going to imagine an experiment. And the experiment is we have two cell culture wells. So these are wells within a plate. And in there, we have seeded some cells um, growing. Now one of the wells we will treat with hemolysin. Now that's a protein that's released from Staphylococcus aureus that lyses our cells. Staphylococcus aureus is an infectious bacteria that likes to eat us. So it releases um, a protein that pops our cells, right? And that is key because this is what the LDH assay is all about. It's about measuring how many cells popped or lysed or necrosed or necroptosed or pyroptosed. These are all just fancy ways to say popped. Okay, so uh, let's start with our wells up here. I don't want to take up too much room. So here are our wells and I'm going to draw the cells along the bottom. And they've each got a little nuclei. Now these, oh, that one doesn't. Uh, now these cells are adherent cells, which means that they stick to the plastic at the bottom of the well. Now we can't just grow cells in air, so there has to be growth media here. So here we have our pink growth media. Now it's actually pink because it contains a pH um, uh, sensitive compound in there, which it too is a color metric assay. So when this uh, pink compound goes yellow, that means it's gone acidic. And so that color change is a color metric assay, right? So we have, uh, we have quantified the pH of our growth media by it changing from yellow, uh, from pink to yellow. Why do we do that? Well, when bacteria, if we get a bacterial contamination or if our cells um, consume all the glucose in that growth media, they will create an acidic environment. So it's a way to see whether we've got an infection or whether we need to feed ourselves more growth media. But that's a color metric essay that I didn't mean to describe, but it just dawned on me the growth media that we grow ourselves in is in fact a color metric essay. Anyway, so what we then do is we'll treat this well with hemolysin and this well with a vehicle or a control. So it might just be a buffer or saline. I'm going to draw this one a bit bigger so we can see what happens inside. Okay, so um, the treated well, I should put an H under it. You've got a label, that's important in science, label everything. Okay, so this one has the hemolysin in, and what we can see is our cells have popped. And what has happened because we have popped our cells? The stuff that was inside the cells has come out of the cells. That seems quite simple, right? The stuff that was inside the cell is now out of the cell. Now, what is inside of the cells? Lots of stuff, but one example is an enzyme called Lactose dehydrogenase or LDH. That's inside the cells. Um, lactate dehydrogenase, sorry, not lactose. Uh, lactate dehydrogenase is inside the cells. LDH. It's not important that you know the full name, but the LDH enzyme was inside the cells and now it is outside the cell. Over here, it's still just in the cells. So what we're then going to do is we're going to transfer it into new wells. Now I'm going to draw these bigger, but they're not normally bigger. They're normally all the same size, which allows us to just sort of use the same tools to manipulate them. Shuffle that across. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna transfer the growth media. And what that means is we're not transferring these cells down here, just the liquid on top. So that's gonna to go across here and across here. 
Now, um, in that cell was the LDH enzyme, and LDH enzymes facilitate reactions. So I often draw enzymes like Pac-Man because uh, enzymes have to have a pockets that facilitate those actions. So it's good to draw them with that. So over here, we've got nothing because these cells didn't die. Nothing was came out of them. So we've got nothing over there. And this one, we have an enzyme called LDH. And that is important. So what we can then do is we our add a substrate. Remember, substrates are things that go into enzymes. Um, so we add a substrate, and this substrate is colorless, right? So we add into it a substrate like this, and we add it into here as well. And what happens is uh, the, this substrate will then be uh, an enzymatic reaction, a reduction actually, will happen because of this enzyme, right? This LDH enzyme, um, the substrate was designed for this enzyme, and a reaction will occur with this substrate will then be reduced. And when it gets reduced, it gets turned red, right? That's not red. I'm colorblind. Ah, I found it, I found it, I found it. Okay, it gets turned red. It's quite important, the color of this. So the amount of substrate that goes from colorless to red is dependent on this enzyme and the concentration of this enzyme is dependent on how many cells popped so by doing this assay we've quantified how many cells have popped based on how red the wells have gone the growth media has gone in the assay but how do you quantify redness and this is where a plate reader comes in a spectrophotometer is what they're also called, um, but we just call them plate readers because they read 96 well plates and they can do normally much more than just spectrophotometry. So let's see how spectrophotometry works, right? So we've got our well. I'll just tell you very quickly, we put a chemical in, an acid actually, to get rid of this pink color of the growth media. So what we will end up with is a black well, well actually a completely transparent well. But I'll draw it in black. And then we end up with a red well. And so this is red. So how do we quantify that redness? Science isn't just about looking at it and going, yeah, that's way redder than the other one. We need to quantify it. Now, to quantify the redness, you need to understand a little bit about color. Um, and I'm going to use the examples of leaves. Leaves are a great example, right? So white light contains all the colors, right? And white light hits leaves, right? Now, leaves contain chloroplasts and other pigments to absorb the colors. Now the colors that they absorb are blue and red. So they absorb blue and red and they leave green coming out, right? So the leaves look green to us because they've absorbed the other wavelengths. It's quite interesting, right? The color is dictated by the fact that it does interact with that wavelength, not that it doesn't. So this is red. So if we shot a red light through it, it would just go straight through it, right? So red isn't the color you want. You want to use a different color, and what we use is blue, right? So um, what we will do is we will pop this in a plate reader. And what a plate reader does is it has a motor in it, and this motor can move around to view each of the wells. It has like a, um, a bunch of, uh, it's like two, anyway. It can move on an X, Y axis and move around to view each of the wells. Now each of the wells, what it will do is it will shoot blue light through, and then it will measure using a sensor how much comes out the top. So a sensor up here will detect how much comes out the top and a little blue light comes through there, right? And so in this one, we can see that there was, um, oh, I've got to draw that later. So the blue light goes straight through the clear one, no problem. The blue light on this one is going to get completely absorbed. And that's why it is red, right? It is red because it absorbs the other wavelengths except for red. Okay, so when we go to quantify it, um, what we can do is we draw a graph, and on one axis we'll have A for absorbance, and then we could have our control and our, um, our control and our hemolysin, and we'll see that our control has almost no absorption, and our hemolysin has massive absorption. And through that, we can quantify cell death. Now, what we often do in these experiments is we have um, 
Uh, what we often do in these experiments is we will intentionally lyse one of the wells using a detergent. Detergents are guaranteed to lie cells. They disrupt membranes and disrupt uh, the interaction between water. So uh, that way we have a 100% lysis and we can express the other wells as a percentage of 100% lysis, right? So um, if we had a third well in there that was 100% lysis, we could then change this graph to percentage of 100% lysis, okay? So that's the LDH essay. Hey team, Dr. Jack Gordy here, and today I'm just going to be taking you through another color metric assay that's often used in cell culture research and is super important. And this one's called the Resazorin assay. The Resazorin assay. So let's jump into it. So the Resazorin assay is an assay that quantifies the amount of cells that are alive. So it's actually kind of the opposite of the LDH assay. So um, here we have a Resazorin assay already set up and we've got our cells that are adhered at the bottom of the well and they're in a Resazorin solution in a growth media and Resazorin is normally blue, right? So we, we have a blue compound here, the Resazorin, in with our cells and these cells have been treated with hemolysin, which is the Staphylococcus aureus protein toxin, which pops cells. It's how they digest us. So these cells have hemolysin. So these cells have popped and died. They're now dead, right? Now, the resazorin molecule. I'm going to draw these a bit bigger. Now, the resazorin molecule is blue. Here we go. Draw the cells a wee bit bigger. So what happens in the resazorin assay, which is really cool because it's actually an assay that we can uh, view over and over again and watch it occur live. Um, the resazorin is actually cell permeable and it will go into the cells where it is reduced uh, by um, uh, NADH, NAD and NADH processes, which are essentially cell respiration. So uh, cell glycolysis and respiration uh, create molecules that will automatically reduce the resazorin. Now, when the resazorin is reduced, it goes from blue to red. So we get a color change as the living cells respire and undergo normal metabolism. They produce compounds that will naturally reduce this blue resazorin into a red product. So uh, we end up with uh, a slow color change from blue to red. Now, what's cool about this is we can then put that in our plate reader um, like we did with the LDH assay. So let's chuck it in the plate reader. Um, and a plate reader, what a plate reader will do is it'll shoot a blue light through the well, including the cells. The cells are there in this, in this assay. And the blue light will go through the cells. And when it hits a red molecule, it will get absorbed and it will not come through. But on this um, side, on this side of the resazorin assay, when the uh, because there are no living cells in there, none of the blue resazorin was converted to that red product, and so the blue light can just go straight through. Remember, remember that light, um, the color that you see is the result of the non-absorbed wavelengths, right? So um, if the liquid is blue, it's because it doesn't absorb blue light. Blue light goes straight through and we can see it. Um, whereas red light gets completely absorbed um, and that's why we can't see it. So if you shoot uh, a blue light through this, laser, uh, through this, um, uh, through, uh, this, it will get absorbed by the red resazorium, which is only present in the red, uh, in the, um, the blue light will only be absorbed by the red well, and the red well is only in the uh, well that has the living cells. So it's cellular metabolism that's turning the blue resazorin red, and the red will block blue light coming through, so now you can quantify how many living cells there are in it. Now what's really, really cool about the resazorin assay, which is different to the LDH assay, which is very, very cool, is we can leave these cells in the plate reader and just read it every five minutes, every 10 minutes, every however much you want to. So let's have a look. This is a bit messy, this video. Sorry, team. Um, so uh, what we might end up with is absorbance. 
And remember, this is absorbance of the blue light, so we might write something like 450 nanometers, which is the wavelength of blue light. So we're looking at absorbance of blue, and what we might see is in the hemolysin group, something like this, right? So because there's no cell respiration going on pretty much, we see barely any change in the absorbance over time. So this is time, this might be 120 minutes, zero minutes, right? So over time, there's no change. But in the, in the control well, um, we will see the absorbance steadily increase um, in the control well because there are living cells in there. And that, so that's a super cool way to uh, quantify how many living cells are in your dish and how fast toxins work, right? So um, if hemolysin was a slow uh, toxin, we might expect it to follow the control group until a certain point and then break away because it's a slow working toxin, right? So you can actually find out a lot more a little bit from the Resazorin assay than you can from the LDH assay. And you can actually do um, uh, different versions of the same assay in different wells so you can measure the cell death and the, the number of living cells to sort of double measure the same thing. So you could have a well that you do the LDH assay on and a well that you do the Resazorin assay on and that way you're double quantifying how many alive cells there are and how many cells that have died. And so that's a great strategy because it's always good to measure twice in science. Thanks team. Sorry that was a bit messy, but that's the Resazorin assay.